Hi folks, my name is David Gewirtz and welcome to ZDNet's DIY IT Discovery Series on 3D printing. Today what we're going to do is learn a little about what a Raspberry Pi is. So a Raspberry Pi is a single board computer and they're very inexpensive and they can be used to do a variety of things. I bought a Raspberry Pi kit uh, for about 70 bucks from Amazon and it comes with a number of different components. It came in this little bag, which I'll open up. Um, comes with, the reason I bought the kit, the, the real Raspberry Pi, let's open up the Raspberry Pi itself and take a look at it because that's the key thing here. This is the Raspberry Pi itself. It is a single board computer. And if you look at it, it has a variety of things. It has a bunch of USB interfaces. It has an ethernet interface. It has an HDMI interface. It has a micro USB interface, um, a spot for uh, a, my, a little SD card. Um, so it's got all, and, and a series of, of GPI uh, pins so that you can connect other devices to it. This thing is what is called a single board computer or an SBC. Now what's interesting about this is that these, so I'll, my wife's old Dell uh, uh, netbook, right? And even this, this old Zotac um, Windows machine these are also computers that have a single board. You can actually sort of see how the single board is built on the back of this. And as you know, most laptops are a single board. So while, the, while most of the computers that are actually sold, desktop computers that are sold today are really boards that are single boards, the category of single board computers, let's line that up nice and pretty, the category of single board computers is really meant for these very low cost controller devices. And this one, um, and Raspberry Pis in general are about 50 bucks. Um, this is the Raspberry Pi 3. It has a little more memory on it. This is about 512 meg of RAM. Uh, it is a little faster and it has, like I mentioned, it has onboard HDMI. This may even have onboard Wi-Fi. I honestly don't know because I'm not planning on using the Wi-Fi. Um, and the reason it's 70 bucks is I bought a matching um, uh, charger for it a matching power source for it simply because I didn't want to take a chance that what I had wouldn't power it correctly so I bought a charger for it I got a couple of heat sinks that came with it uh, and I bought uh, a 16 gig S micro SD card um, so what's gonna happen is Linux is gonna load on the 16 gig micro SD card plug into here boot off of this thing this will be powered up uh, here and Ethernet will be connected in here, and then USB will go into here, and it will talk to the Lulzbot Mini behind me. And that's the whole purpose of this. The reason I got this, and in a future uh, video I'm going to show you how to actually set this up, is unlike the, the maker box. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Minor technical difficulties. Unlike the MakerBot, which has a full onboard controller, the only interface, the only, the only point that comes into the Lulzbot at all is this little USB port. There's no indicator on it, there's no switch, there's no upload point, there's no USB card that you can plug in. It's expecting you to plug in a computer to run it. And my wife wants back her, uh, her little Dell, and I thought it'd be a lot more fun to run this thing off of Octoprint on Linux. So you may have heard, by the way, if you hear a little bit of an explosion, this is Florida, fireworks are legal, and my neighbors have decided that that's a great thing to be doing. So there may be a few background explosions. <laughs> Welcome to Florida. In any case, you may have also heard of Arduinos, and the difference between a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino is that the Arduino, which I don't have here right now, is a microcontroller where the Raspberry Pi is a single board computer. And the real difference is that this runs an operating system and runs programs on the operating system. And this is going to run Linux and it's going to run a program called Octoprint to drive the, uh, uh, to drive the Lulzbot. Whereas an Arduino is a control board and you download the code you want to run directly to the controller board and it does just that one program. 
So you could think of this thing as the central control unit for something, but you might have a bunch of Arduinos, for example, in robotics, controlling how an arm goes up and an arm goes down and things like that. So very roughly speaking, you're looking at, if you count, move the packaging out of the way here for a second, if you count these, I'll add into that the heat sinks. If you count these four items here, the heat sinks, the Raspberry Pi, the uh, 16 gigabyte micro SD card, and power, you're talking about 70 bucks. And so you've got a much less expensive solution. Now, obviously, as you can tell, there's no case for this, but I'm building this for a 3D printer, so the, the obvious thing is I'm going to 3D print a case that I'm gonna plug this thing into. But that is roughly what a Raspberry Pi is. It is a general purpose, tiny little, super inexpensive computer that you can use to do things with. Now, the fact is, is that people are able to run Chrome on this thing, so they can actually plug this thing and take the HDMI out of this, plug it into a TV, plug a keyboard into one of the USB slots, uh, and actually use this thing as a computer. And you can make a little teeny weeny desktop computer out of it and basically uh, essentially make your own little Linux Chromebook or something. But most often these things are used in robotics, they're used in 3D printing, they're used as project computers to build, so they're used for security systems, all that sort of thing. And, and your imagination is the limit when it comes to building. So there you go, there's my quick draw, quick introduction to what is a Raspberry Pi. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to see more on the 3D printing discovery series or more of these videos that I'm doing, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, which is roughly in that corner somewhere, and have yourself a great day.